in a completely random moment, I'd like to show you guys something. Have a look at this. I've actually got a screenshot of it. So we'll see how this looks. And if it doesn't look good enough, I'll show you the screenshot. Roman Atwood Vlogs. I just got the notification. Just clicked on it to watch it because I'm waiting for a battery to finish charging before I go test Clifford. Okay. It's called Daily Vlogs Only. 20 views. If it only has 20 views, how does it have 700 likes? Plus my one like. 20 views, 700 likes. I don't know what's up with that, but, uh, wow. Now return you to your regular scheduled vlog. How's it going today, everybody? Welcome to the Daily Random Vlog. If you watched yesterday's vlog, you know that I just got myself, well, they just finally showed up, a full set of MIP axles for all the way around Clifford the Savage Beast. If you don't know who Clifford is yet, he's a Traxxas 110 scale summit, summit truck, front and rear locking diffs, high and low speeds, uh, 775 sized brushed motor in mind. Some people go brushless and that's usually where they kind of start to not like the summit because things break a lot quicker and a lot more frequent. I've also seen guys post that they haven't had any issues at all with breakages. Well, my issue was the axles. I was doing things like this to my axles and things like this to my axles. Yeah, like it just, it was rough. It was rough. I couldn't go for a run without snapping or busting or collapsing an axle or a yoke. And now that problem should be defeated entirely. It was absolutely no problem at all. Once again, shout out to worldofrcs.com for a quick and expedient delivery of the exact part that I was looking for, or the exact parts. You can see it in there. Oh, that great MIP goodness. The only MIP sticker that you're going to find on my truck. And you'll see what this uh, blue nickel metal hydrate battery is for once... Once we go test it out, I'm not going far today, just because it's a really, I don't know, I was feeling ambitious, like I wanted to get outdoors and get doing stuff, and then with all the walking and everything that I've done the last few days, the stress of the bike, and then the relief of the bike coming home, those are really nice looking axles, eh? But I just, I don't know if I have the energy to go and do the walk that I was originally planning, but we're still going to go out and test Clifford this afternoon. Just down the street, uh, there's that little rock section. It's like a little rock crawl area. I'll be using, of course, this right there for the uh, recording because it's just easier to do. It doesn't die in the cold, cold air like the iPhone does. But yes, yes, very, very, very happy to have those in the truck finally. And I'm almost willing to run a pool to say what's going to break next. <laughs> what's the new part that I'm going to have to put in there? Uh, Jess Heffern, you already said about the front bulkhead, and if not the front bulkhead, then there will also be the issues with the rear diff. I wonder why it's just the rear, not the front. But come to think of it, it's always the rear axles that were breaking, wasn't it? Yeah, so maybe, uh, kind of gives me a heads up of what to get next. I've seen a lot of good stuff, G, Hot Racing, or H&R Racing, Leading Edge Machining, I think is what they're called. They make a whole abundance of parts for Traxxas stuff that's hardened, steeled. I can't even think of the name of it right now, but there's a whole world of aftermarket parts to choose from when it comes to beefing a truck like this up. And it's going to eventually happen. It'll take me longer than most people, but you know what? Hey, at least it's going to happen.
all I can say, folks, after a good outdoor test like that is I'm happy. I think you already knew that, though. I'm quite pleased with these axles. They uh, really haven't been tested yet, to be honest. They haven't been put to the full capability of what... Uh, going through that bush, getting sticks and twigs and everything jammed up inside. You can see what I, what I mean. There's quite a bit of... Uh, to the grease anyway, stuff sticking to the grease wherever I put grease down. That's that's bound to happen. At least it's keeping the moisture out. Keep those pieces well lubricated so that everything can do its job properly. So if you're thinking about that MIP axle upgrade, I really do strongly strongly recommend it. It was the only thing that was failing me on the summit so far. Now there's one big difference I did notice that with the differentials locked. I had to get, I had to lean into that throttle just a little bit more, but that's because it's forcing the tires in a turn and stuff even to spin at the same speed. So you're fighting these great big grippy trenchers. So yeah, only really lock the diffs if you're off road. For me, sometimes there's a little bit of on road between the off roads because my, uh, well, I've got to fix this one, but my diff locking setup is not, I repeat, is not remote. I'm still actually, if anybody happens to have one kicking around after the uh, proper summit transmitter, I do have the proper summit receiver in the box here, so it's just a matter of rebinding the transmitter to it and installing servos. I've got mini servos. I'll have to make a mount for in here or order one because I still haven't got one yet. But it would be kind of nice to remotely lock them. I'm tired of climbing out of the cab and locking my diffs at the hubs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> And everybody, welcome a new member to the shop, T600. He's a 600, right? Or is he the T800? Anyways, there you go. Straight from the future, he's doing some uh, supercharger work to the low C for us. He's working really slow. I mean, he's so slow, you can't even see him moving. But yeah. I know, it's nothing compared to some of the other scale shops that you see people go got going out there. But I kind of like it. It gives me something to tinker with here and there when none of the vehicles need work. I even got my own fuel pump. Check that out. Contains lead. All in all, it wasn't the best day to be outside testing RCs. But, you know, I did what I could, when I could, while I could. We'll get out to the trails again soon. That's not a worry. It's not a real big, uh, oh no, it's not going to happen again. we still got a long time before the snow flies. Fingers crossed. As for that apartment situation, you remember yesterday's vlog, I said uh, we're going to have to talk about this, or we're going to have words about it. Not like me and you guys having words, or me and anybody really having words, it's just, I got to think of how to properly say it and convey what's on my mind, so A, I don't sound ungrateful, B, I don't sound like I'm just on a rant. And see, I want you guys to be able to understand where I'm coming from in this thought uh, about moving. Because yes, I do need, I do want to get out of this place and get somewhere new, fresh start, fresh apartment. Uh, but I don't want to be stuck in a shoebox. You know what I mean? There's one window that lets in light and I could throw a ball and have it bounce back to me from one end of the apartment to the other. It's, it's not very big at all. So I'll figure out that situation. That's for me to worry about, not you guys, and that's why you don't get a rant about it. Right? Right. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just, as I say every night, right? Think positive, stay positive, and do your best to keep a smile on your face. It really can help your outlook. It's tough when times are tough, and we get down, we get depressed, but we are only human, and these things happen. These are called emotions. So, as I just said, think positive. Stay positive. Keep a smile on your face, and we'll see you right here tomorrow. Good night. Vlog over.